So next, we have Rick Burris, who's with the Mississippi Department of Marine Resources with the Office of Marine Fisheries. He is the director of the Shrimp and Crab Bureau. And Rick was involved with the seafood testing that was done in Mississippi between 2010 and 2014. So let me pull this up, Rick. So he's going to go over a little bit about the sampling that was done for this testing program. Oh, hold on one second. Yeah, if you don't mind. You can use this too, but the mouse is a little bit better. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. As Larissa said, uh, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the Department of Marine Resources Office of Marine Fisheries Deep Food Safety Testing Program, which, as you're all aware, uh, was a response to the Deepwater Horizon Oil Spill of 2010. Um, first off, I want to recognize our state and federal partners who all had their own areas of expertise during this process. Our area of expertise being regulators were actually collecting the samples. We had a lot of other help from a lot of other agencies. Um, the Department of Environmental Quality, Mississippi Department of Health, Mississippi State Chem Lab, Mississippi National Guard, NOAA, uh, EPA, Coast Guard, and then the FDA. Just as a summary of our uh, response to the spill, um, we started out by administering daily flights, weather permitting, um, searching for oil in and near our waters from April to August 2010. We had around 64 flights overall. We also conducted extensive water sampling um, in fixed locations near our island passes and also where oil was spotted with our, with our plane. You see in this picture here, uh, this is an aerial photograph from one of our planes. That's one of our fisheries vessels. Um, that our plane spotted uh, surface oil and we went to water samples from those areas. Um, as once we found oil in our water, of course, as you heard earlier, uh, we precautionarily closed those areas to all, to all commercial and recreational fisheries. Um, we began closing areas June 1st and by July 1st, all Mississippi waters south of Highway 90 at this highway right, right out here were closed to all fisheries activities. And in order to reopen these areas, um, we followed the reopening protocols that you heard before this earlier um, by NOAA and, and FDA. And it's, it's included extensive tissue sampling. And during this process, uh, we went out collecting the samples, sent them to the NOAA lab in Pascagoula uh, for the sensory analysis, and then on to FDA for, in, in Maryland for the chemical analysis. And through the results of those analysis, we were able to open up our Mississippi waters to commercial and recreational fishing activities by August. But we continued to sample after that, um, uh, after, after the reopening, and I'll, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. We also went around to all our seafood dealers, processors, and retailers statewide and inspected their seafood. Um, we produced a publication with Gary Shodraw, the Mississippi, uh, Mississippi Seafood Safety Newsletter. We produced that right after uh, all our reopening was, was, was done to ensure the public uh, that seafood was safe to consume. And uh, we basically went over all our efforts and everything you've heard today, um, all our efforts and then the actual analysis and the samples that we took. So we wanted to be out and clear what everything that we did and the results of all our tests so people so the public would be assured that their seafood is safe to consume. Um, and then we once we produced that publication we put it on our website and we continue to update our sample results monthly uh, to keep informing the public that we were still doing that. Um, and throughout the process, we held several public meetings, put Q and A's, and uh, did a lot of press relating to uh, seafood safety as well. So, getting our sample methods, uh, we actively went out in our vessels and collected shrimp, blue crabs, oysters, and a wide variety of fin fish using gear types, um, fishery and independent gear types such as trawls, commercial red crab traps, gill nets, uh, fin fish. I mean, excuse me, fish traps hooking line and then the oyster judges. Once we collected those samples, um, we turned them to the lab, we, we removed the edible tissue um, following the same no on FDA protocols used in the uh, reopening, peeled the shrimp, uh, picked the crabs, removed the hepatopancreas, um, removed the oysters from the shells and filleted the fish. Um, those samples we 
packaged either in aluminum foil or uh, um, sample jars and through the Mississippi Department of Environmental Quality was sent to the Mississippi State Chem Lab for uh, the, the chemical analysis where they looked for PAHs and DOFs. Um, we also received several samples from the public, um, fish with lesions, uh, crabs with black gills, darkest colored shrimp, where the public was concerned with contamination, we submitted those samples as well. So uh, this chart shows uh, our sampling efforts from May of 2010 through December of 2014 when our funding for the project ran out. Uh, as you can see, the majority of our samples took place here at the beginning um, from June to September. That's when we were going through our reopening protocols and we wanted to collect as many samples as we possibly could. Um, but we continued after that uh, sampling monthly. We had five different zones, four inside our islands and one south of our islands. But we sampled monthly all the way to December 2014. This is a map of all our, uh, all our sample points. Um, we tried to cover a wide range uh, of area. Uh, we started out um, all the way from our coastal rivers. If you're not familiar with the area, we have uh, the Pearl River to the west, Bay, Saint, Bay of St. Louis to the west as well, and then Biloxi Bay up here, and the Pasco River, and then Grand Bay over here. So we went all the way, our, our jurisdiction runs from Interstate 10 all the way out three miles south of the island. We, we sampled from Interstate 10, and we even went out sampling in federal water. You can see this, that's where all this air is right here. Um, this is shrimp trawls as well as uh, reef fish from our artificial reef zones. So we tried to cover as much area as we could. So overall, uh, we submitted 820 samples from our seafood groups, uh, 164 were shrimp, that included four species, white, pink, brown, and royal reds, uh, 151 blue crabs, 344 sunfish, of which 26, uh, 26 species. Um, we submitted everything from sunfish to red snapper to cobia, red drum, spotted sea trout, Atlantic croaker, even hardhead catfish we wanted to to uh, submit as many species as we could. Um, and then uh, 161 eastern oyster. And if you'll notice the column over here to the right, none of those came back above the FDA levels of concern. So this chart um, shows the results, our actual results of our analysis uh, that the State Chem Lab did for us. And you can see the seafood categories on the top, shrimp, fish, crab, and oyster. And we have our uh, hydrocarbons and DOS on the left. We included the maximum detected for the whole the whole time we were uh, sampling, and then the levels of concern over here as well. And as you've heard earlier, none no sample came back anywhere close to to any levels of concern. Of, of concern, we did find trace amounts of several of these hydrocarbons. Though, um, I just want to note that these. This is what we were updating monthly. Uh, we wanted the public to know what what we were finding and and to know that the seafood was safe to eat uh, as a result of our analysis. So that was a brief description of how we sampled. Um, I think the next talk is going to be on the actual chemical analysis of it.